All right, y'all, welcome back to Kamado Arms Channel. All right, so today we're checking out something from the Australian Army, and this is the Duke of Gloucester Cup. Now, I'm not, first of all, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right. But today we're checking out an infantry competition in the Royal Australian Regiment. So I guess seven sections were competing to kind of be the best section, infantry section in the Royal Australian Regiment. And it looks like from there, um, they moved on to the Cam Cambrian Patrol, Cambrian Patrol. Um, which is over in the UK, which is kind of cool for them to actually like travel, you know, as like the, the next sort of tier. But yeah, I did something similar to this when I was in the Marine Corps. I was the squad leader for our division squad competition, like the best squad competition. And uh, yeah, it was a, uh, it was, it was brutal. It was a doozy. Like the first day I lost like my fingernail on, I think my index finger, which is a uh, pretty annoying for doing anything at that point, especially when you're out in the woods for a week. But uh, yeah, I imagine it's going to be pretty tough, pretty brutal. But yeah, it's a week long kind of thing. So it's tolerable, but it's definitely still annoying, but it should be cool. Let's check it out. So the Duke of Gloucester Cup, also known as the Gloucester? Dog Cup, Gloucester? is the Australian Army <laughs> preeminent section level competition oh gosh, that okay. we run every year here at the School of Infantry. It okay, is an annual opportunity thing? for us here at the school to provide a framework for the RAR battalions to send their sections and to be tested across the entire suite of skills required to be an infantry soldier in today's modern army. Interesting. So his beret, I'm kind of just focusing on the beret at this point. They have the beret flash like right in the kind of middle of their beret. And I've never seen a beret shaped like that. So it's kind of interesting to see how all, all the different countries shape it. So yeah, like he's saying, it sounds very similar to our squad competition where we got kind of tested on a bunch of different things. Physical fitness, of course, doing like crazy movements, our communications knowledge, our weapons knowledge, um, like obstacle courses and stuff, land navigation. So yeah, it's uh it's pretty much all encompassing. So you really need to be on your game because if you're if you're deficient on something, then it's gonna be super brutal and it's gonna make everything so much harder. Cause it's not just like one thing and you're you are you are kind of done with that. It's like, yeah, there's gonna be events where you're doing like land navigation, you know, physical fitness, all this other stuff at, at the same time. So it's mentally taxing at the same time. Of skills required to be an infantry soldier in today's modern army. The 2022 Dog Cup holding? has been long in the waiting. Each section has been training for a long time, and this allows that training. Is that a Scottish accent? <laughs> am, I, am I, like, stupid? Sounds very Scottish. I mean, I, I don't know, for a Scot to move to Australia seems kind of unlikely, too. But I don't, I mean, hey, it looks warmer, at least. So there's that. Okay, uh, that kind of threw me off. Unless, like, Australia has, like, similar accents. To come to fruition. The Dog Cup is a prestigious event. This is a section training year after year to compete. It gives them bragging rights against nice. their other units. It's a proud, prestigious moment. Sick. Each section member will be beaming with proud just to be selected to compete in the Dog Cup. The Hell yeah, compete. okay. Damn, he's passionate about this. It, it is pretty cool to like be, be there representing. I think they're saying they're representing their battalion. Being there representing that, it, it means a big deal. Like usually there's a lot of train up and maybe even like some sort of tryouts. Um, I know generally speaking, you kind of like stack the section. So it, it won't necessarily be an organic section like the people that you normally operate with. Sometimes, you know, they'll, they'll stack it up. That's not how we did it. Um, so, you know, we, we weren't cheating or anything. I, I think that's still kind of cheating a bit. <laughs> but sometimes, yeah, the battalions might just like get all their best people and kind of throw them together. But it's definitely cool to at least represent your battalion for something like this. Competitors will then go forward and compete against international armies in the UK and mm -hmm. the Cambrian Patrol. To have the ability to go to the UK and compete internationally, having completed and won the Dog Cup, is an achievement that only a few can talk about. Oh, hell yeah. Nice, are they doing force on force? Look like it. Dude, their gear is so sick. The Australian infantry get they get it right, man. Oh, except for those gas masks. I don't know about those. Nice. Oh, okay. Well at least those guys are kind of lucky because they were the first ones doing it, it looks like. Everybody else kind of has to go through all this kind of crummy stuff, but for them, it's, yeah, you know, nice and flat at least. <laughs> and this, I thought this was kind of similar or at least reminiscent of what we see with the uh, commando test, uh, but maybe, maybe not. At least they're not underwater, which definitely makes the difference. Yeah, dude, 
the Australian infantry, they have like some freaking awesome, awesome gear. So on arrival to the School of Infantry here in Singleton, the sections are met with shock and awe. They'll have an opening address where they'll meet the SI and myself, the Wing Star Major, hmm. and then straight into a rigorous kit check prior to conducting battle preparation. From that moment on, the sections are tactical and being watched he by all happy. the directing staff who will score them accordingly as they progress through the competition. Oh, so it looks like they're checking, are they checking the packing list as well? That's something that happens a lot. It's like you're supposed to show up with a certain amount of items or very specific items and you get dinged like right away if you're missing that stuff. I know we we got dinged hard because like, I don't know, I was just, I was, I was a pretty, I was a very junior squad leader. At least I was a very junior sergeant. I had been a squad leader for a bit, but we were missing some things and it was just so dumb. It's like, Dude, I know we checked that like yesterday or whatever, and somehow stuff just disappears. Competition. <laughs> the first day we go into the live firing phase. This sees the sections compete against each other and a number of his live firing exercises. The sections are put under extreme nice. pressure and that they can see each other, potentially see how well they are doing. It's important that the sections and indeed the individuals are able to use their weapon systems accurately and effectively throughout the entire competition. Word. Good test. For sure, you, you definitely need to be effective with the weapon. conduct the enhanced combat shooting phase. It starts off with a 3.2 kilometer best effort run and then straight into the shoot. This means that as they Damn. arrive at the firing point, the sections have an increased heart rate and are immediately under pressure. They will no then kidding. conduct the standard shoot by day, then the enhanced combat shooting standard. Whoa, what the heck? What pistol is the Australian Army rocking? Is that like a freaking high power or something? Damn, everything looks so, I mean, even the holster looks freaking high speed too. Why do they all look like super tall as well? It's kind of weird. But yeah, these guys all look super high speed and then they pull out like this dinosaur looking pistol. <laughs> is that how they hold the AEGs when they run with them? Or that? The whatever they call them, EF-88, something like that. Damn, shooting a saw kneeling is not fun. Dude, they got the shot timers and stuff. This is freaking awesome. And transition drills. Dude, this is my kind of competition. We didn't go this hard when it came to like the marksmanship aspect. I wish we did. That's like the bread and butter of infantry. Shoot, move, and communicate, you know? Damn, these guys all look pretty freaking solid too. Nice, night shooting. It's so much fun just shooting with a laser like that. Dude, reloading at night too. That is like, they're really like going in depth into like certain things like, okay, shooting is one thing, but shooting in the dark is a whole nother thing. And doing weapon weapon manipulations in the dark is a whole nother thing. I remember like the first time I put on a tourniquet for, for someone when it was like nighttime and I didn't have like any sort of light on me. It was like, it was pretty rough. It was like still within like 20 seconds, which was okay. But yeah, you just like, you realize, damn, this is so much harder when I can't actually see anything. <laughs> from the live firing phase, the sections will then move into the patrol phase. This sees them move from shooting to becoming tactical and operating in different environments under different mm. amounting pressures. Starts Word. off with a night navigation as a section over approximately Ouch. 10 kilometers through the night. This then sees okay. them finish at a start point for the subsequent stands. Each stand will test different elements and different aspects of conventional fundamental war fighting. Oh, no kidding. Dude, this is the intense. The will then move on to a major obstacle crossing. This sees them crossing a large water gap at depth. This not only tests their ability to go through the Sodra process, but also tests their physical and mental endurance, getting into cold water. Is this like a basic skill for Australian infantry? Because I gotta say, it is not a basic skill for like Marine or Army infantry, depending on the unit, of course. But 
I mean, I've been to a few different units in a bunch of different parts of the US and we didn't train this as like a standard. It's not like, even when you're going through like the expert soldier badge or the expert, oh gross, why did I say that first? Even when you're going for the expert infantry badge, like they're not training anything that advanced. So that's pretty cool that they're implementing something that kind of tricky or at least logistically tricky into something like this. Uh, then on the morning that we started to know it was two degrees. So this would have been a shot for anybody. <laughs> Ouch. From the major obstacle crossing, the sections will move to the DCP. The DCP mm. sounds extremely simple. However, this has layers of complexity. The section commander and the section Yo, for real. will need to go through and think about ethical decision making. They will have to positively identify the enemy who may or may not be dressed in civilian attire. This makes it extremely difficult. They'll have to control the crowd and potentially yeah. have to go through prison of a wardrobe. Dude, and again, this is something that I got experience with, but that's because I was in like, I did some stuff in, you know, Marine Corps security forces. And then from there, I got to go into more like the CQB school oriented stuff. So we got to do a lot more training as far as like building up some of these like ad hoc positions, setting up these, this Constantino wire, actually doing these vehicle control points. And it's pretty tricky to like understand how to actually, you know, have a chain of custody with all these people, how to separate them, how to properly search them for a, just like a standard infantryman that is asking a lot to have like all these different tasks in one sort of event like this. That's insane. That is really, really cool though. Nice. The section of the Reaching. Is a section attack. This is the bread and butter for any infantry soldier. This sees yes, them conduct is. a section attack over undulating complex. Through the section attack, they will meet up against an adverse enemy and have to fight their way through, using a number nice. of different assets that are available to them. The sections will be of exposed course. to a CBRN environment. This will see them don Jeez. the respirators and then have to conduct a casualty evacuation under pressure and whilst wearing their CBRN PPE. Damn, dude, seriously? First of all, it's pretty cool that they got all the smoke grenades, but On completion that of section sucks. attacks, the sections will move to an area where they will be confronted by a mass casualty situation. Oh, this will dude. see them having to deal with a number of casualties with differing injuries. It's important that the section commander at this time remains cool, calm, and controls his troops. Yep. This is an uncomfortable... Un oh, no kidding. Yeah, that is definitely a mass casualty. Damn, you got like... A mass casualty can mean... A, a few different things depending on like what your kind of unit is or what your operation or mission is. But this is like, yeah, I don't know. There's like, what, one, two, there's like at least five, maybe like we saw a couple others. And yeah, with a bunch of different types of injuries, I mean, hopefully they have all the medical equipment with them. Cause if not, then you're kind of screwed right there. <laughs> wow. That just unlocked a memory. So when we were doing the division squad competition, <laughs> our, uh, our core, our corpsman. <laughs> oh man, I need to, I need to talk to some of my buddies about this. But our corpsman, he didn't have a litter, specifically a polis litter, which I guess was like a big deal. They're like, dude, where's the polis litter? So we're trying to like move a casualty, and we didn't have this polis litter. It became like a, a meme inside the unit. Uh, it was, it was really funny. Now that, I, now that I think about it, <laughs> yeah, something like this. Y if you forget like one item. It's like, damn, we're gonna we're gonna struggle here. We're gonna struggle a lot. This is an uncomfortable, unfamiliar situation <laughs> for the sections. This will put them clean outside their comfort zone. The next stand the sections will move to is a point target reconnaissance. This sees the sections move silently and stealthily in order to gain information on damn. enemy movement or indeed enemy base locations. Every it's type of freaking patrol. The sections take the time and invest the time in order to reconnaissance this and gain as much information as possible for subsequent operations. Hmm. Damn, that Team Wendy helmet? They have some nice freaking gear. Nice, okay, here we go. Some force on force. Dude, I love those rifles. If you guys don't, that's fine. Central I'll, I'll love them for you. Face. This sees them conduct the rural to urban transition and then operate in the complex environment. Hmm. Word, dude, yeah, this is, a, this is like more of the fun part, but you can get like, you get lit up in a freaking room and that's it, it's game over.
That was an awkward ram right there. Oh my gosh, we saw this before in the school of infantry. Of the Dog Cup 2022 sees a section going to separate area ambushes. They will be in these ambushes for a period of time, anywhere from five to 10 hours. This will be uncomfortable for them as they're already. I'm guessing they're doing like a forward passage of lines with like their recon elements. I imagine this dude isn't organic to kind of what they do, but yeah, it's kind of cool to be able to at least like push up and do that kind of coordination. Like, dude, what, what did you guys see? Especially this is something that we did a lot with their, uh, like as a recon element is we would, you know, scout ahead, do like a, a route recon or what have you. And then the unit would come after us and we do like a handoff with the commander or what have you saying, this is what we saw. This is something that's probably going to kind of like funnel your troops or something that might slow you down. So things to consider. So I think that's what they're doing here, but I'm not it's too sure. Fatigued. Once the ambush is sprung, they will go through their ambush drills and have to move to an emergency rendezvous point, at which stage they will enter the endurance phase. This will see them move with purpose, covering approximately 50 <laughs> kilometers at speed to test their endurance. Ouch. At different stages throughout the endurance phase, they will pick up a number of items that will make it more difficult for them and put of them under course. pressure. Of course. The combination the most awkward of the endurance too. phase sees the sections hit the obstacle course. This is extremely difficult with a number of obstacles throughout. Should take the sections of roughly 25 to 30 minutes to cross this. Not only is this difficult, it is a race against time. This is where the sections <laughs> can make up vital points that may get them over the line to win the dog cup. Word. Nice, okay. Huh. Well, at least they got to drop the helmets. Helmets are so annoying for this kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah, dude. Gritty. Harsh conditions. And at this point, you know they have like a bunch of small cuts and stuff all over their hands. Like their hands are jacked up. Hell yeah, dude. I love obstacle courses. They're very annoying with a gun. Actually, this is where I lost my fingernail on the first day. We had like an endurance course, which is like pretty much very, very similar to this. But we had one dude, he had his rifle slung on his back and he like vaulted over the wall because I was kind of like putting my knee up so he could jump on my knee and then get over the wall. But my hand was on the other side of the wall kind of stupid like why, why not just go around the wall yeah it wasn't very realistic of a scenario i guess put my arm around it but i paid for it because when my hand was on the other side of the wall when he went over his weapon got like kind of slung forward and the compensator just like ripped my nail off just like that just such a clean swipe and i was like damn okay it's, it's gonna be that kind of week huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Of course, it's wet too. Oh, dude, that sand getting in your sleeves. That's the worst feeling. And the, the weapon swinging around like that. It's kind of funny how they're holding like the bottom of the trigger guard area. That's pretty neat. Oh, damn. Nice task. Dude, that's gotta suck with freaking kid on. <laughs> oh, dude. They all they all just have like a layer of filth on them. It's badass. Dude, there's so many staff. So many. Holy cow. Is this like might be like the culminating event, so might make sense. Damn. <laughs> yep, okay, hell yeah. Makes sense where there's so many people kind of watching that final thing. 
the contrast of the, the guidons with how dirty they are. Dude, that's sick. Cool hats. I would also like to comment quickly on the performance of all of our competitors over the last six days. From their arrival, from the very first minute they got here and throughout the entire competition, we have honestly been nice. overwhelmed by the enthusiasm, the professionalism, the resilience, and the sheer determination that has been on display all week by all sections. These soldiers represent Dude, the very best that of the was Royal freaking Australian intense. Regiment. And we thank you all for putting it all on the line and representing your battalions at such a high standard. Yeah, the dude. final placings of the 2022 Duke of Gloucester Cup oh, are as follows. In seventh place, 8-9 RAR. In sixth place, 6 RAR. In fifth place, oh my gosh, that's 1 like... RAR. In fourth place, 5 RAR. The heart's pumping In when you're hearing place, that. 2 RAR. The runners up for the Duke of Gloucester Cup, 7 RAR. And the winners of the 2022 Duke of Gloucester Cup, 3 RAR. Oh, yeah. Being able to not I wonder if they knew beforehand. Off, like, I know when we did it, we didn't find out until, like, they were doing that, like, actually calling it off, which you, you kind of have, like, a general idea, but for us, like, we were clueless. Go on to represent. We ended up coming in second, so, yeah, we didn't. We literally got nothing for coming in second. I mean, I guess as you, sh you should, but, man, it, it felt kind of bad doing all that and not getting anything, but it was it was an experience. Your army and your country are the scene. Uh, is an extreme privilege uh, that's on the table today for the men and women that have nice. been the dog cup this year. Dude, that was freaking badass. That was like easily the coolest freaking infantry competition I've seen in like any of these videos by far. Damn. Yeah, so I got recommended this in um, email. So I appreciate you guys recommending me this cool stuff. Like this one was badass. And I don't, this video is a little bit older. So I might not have even seen the video if it weren't for that recommendation, but I, I freaking appreciate it. This one was badass. Check out. I saw at the end of the, the video, they had the hashtag good soldiering, which yeah, it, it makes sense. Like they had like the whole freaking array of infantry skills from like the marksmanship to the physical fitness to combining a lot of that stuff to like, even like in each specific thing for the marksmanship, for example, they had like some solid drills. You had transition drills. You had like all these facing drills with a pistol, with a rifle. So it's not just like your very, very generic thing. Like let's do, a, you know, your standard rifle qualification or let's do the standard PT test. They had like a bunch of stuff built in. They had like the obstacle course. And yeah, it was just freaking, <laughs> it looked gnarly. I mean, it looked brutal. I know our squad competition was five days. This one was, I think it was just shy of a week, so six days. Yeah, <laughs> that, that six days is going to be a doozy because I remember in ours, um, I literally went like three days straight with, without sleep and it was, it got to the point where all I could do was try and stay awake and I was, I was useless at that point. Luckily, we got some rest, but these guys looked like they were, they were freaking going through the suck and they were doing pretty freaking well at the end. I mean, you can imagine they're probably pretty freaking you know, knackered at that point or, or pretty freaking broke off as we would say in the army. I'm, I'm not sure if that's a normal term to be honest, but yeah, they, they were feeling it and they were still pushing hard. It does help when you have like all these people showing up randomly. Cause you know, like, okay, we're getting kind of close to the end. So yeah, let's kind of give it our all. But I mean, we kind of saw it there at the end where, you know, they're all like covered in filth and they're kind of representing showing their, uh, I'm guessing like their battalion guide on or, or flag. And that was just, that's like a, a cool picture right there. I did have one picture I got from the, at like right after the division squad competition, which if I, if I can find it, I'll, I'll throw up here. But uh, yeah, it's basically just all of us super tired. I'm kind of just like, yeah, well, we came in second. <laughs> that sucks. It was, it was fun. Again, it was an experience, but yeah, it's, uh, it's brutal. These guys definitely look like they're doing it well and they're doing it in style. And I understand like why these guys are getting some nice kit because it looks like they're really, really upholding a pretty freaking high standard for the, their infantry. And that's something I've always identified with the Australian infantry is yeah, they do it right, which is awesome to see. Uh, hopefully at some point I can go over there and do some training or something with them, or at least I guess just keep watching these videos. But let me know what you guys think. If you guys took part in this, of course, let me know how that was because, um, it's easy to kind of <laughs> you sit here, uh, you know, in my nice clean clothes while these guys are getting dirty and just sweating and sucking. But yeah, if you guys did take part, 
Let me know how it was because uh, it looks like a doozy, but it looks like a very, very good time. And of course, if you guys went through anything similar, let me know as well because it, it's always kind of cool when you can challenge yourself and that competition really does bring out the best in everyone. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. That's it for this video. I'll see you all in the next one.